Yo what's up guys this is Atrix here welcome back to a brand new video and in today's video we'll be taking a look at the new settings which have been added in the Skyline emulators FTX1 branch updates. Afterwards if you just go ahead and open settings you will find brand new settings such as executor flush threshold, use direct memory import, force maximum CPU clock. So these are three brand new settings which have been now added into the normal version of Skyline emulator. These settings were present in the uh, Skyline Edge version. As you know Skyline Edge gets new feature way before then our normal Skyline emulator. And I'll be telling you guys in detail what is the use of these settings and will it improve your FPS. So starting off let me talk about this setting known as force maximum CPU clocks. So you have to enable this setting right here only only if you have an high-end flagship device with Snapdragon 855 processor or above. Use direct memory import. This is the setting which you need to enable if you want to try out Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. So execute a flash threshold. So you can set it up to 512 or 256. Doesn't really matter on flagship devices. But if you have a low-end device, then I would definitely recommend you guys experiment with these settings particularly and see which suits you the best. Execute a slot count. As you guys know, higher may sometimes perform better but will use more RAM. So you can set it to 4, 5 or 6 depending on your device specification. You can always experiment. Emulation on Android is all about experimenting with these settings uh, to see which one works the best for you. Disable frame throttling you can enable it as always. Maximum refresh rate if your device has an 120Hz display. If you enable this option of use maximum display refresh rate. Uh, the game can exceed over 60 frames per second which is pretty cool but if you enable this setting then you also need a great android device which is capable of bringing those kind of fps and displaying them at the same time so let's scroll down enable fast gpu read back as you know you can enable this for few games you will have to disable this i have seen them uh, not work disable audio output enable this option if you guys have a lower device but i'll keep the audio output enabled Afterwards, dock mode, you can enable or disable it, it does not really matter nowadays because most of the game are compatible with dock mode as well as a handle. And here uh, in the system section, you can also edit the username, so you can uh, add your username right here, it's uh, by default set as Skyline. You can also add a profile picture, so that profile picture will be recognized by your games as well. So we'll just go ahead and set our device down, let's go back and that's about it boys. That's the best settings of the Skyline emulator. Let me tell you guys that in the normal FTX1 branch, latest build of Skyline emulator Pokemon Brilliant Diamond does not yet work. So you'll have to wait for about a week or so until that game starts working in normal version of Skyline as well. Use direct memory import, you will have to disable this option if you want to try out games such as Pokemon Sword or you might get black screen issue, your game may not start at all. So I have experienced that after disabling use direct memory import, my games were running properly. But I had to enable that option when I tested out Pokemon Brilliant Diamond in my previous video on the latest Skyline Edge build. As you can see the booting speed is uh, very quick and our game is running at straight up 60 FPS. So I'll just go ahead and press the A button. At the top left corner you'll be able to see the FPS bar but as soon as the game starts it should drop pretty drastically. Again 40 FPS pretty good in my opinion. If you want to try out this game. It should work, it's pretty stable, unlike other games like Legends RCS, uh, Scarlet and Violet, Brilliant Diamond, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Sword and Shield are the two uh, games which you can definitely try out on Skyline Emulator and they do work on Mali GPU as well. Just make sure that your Android device with MediaTek processor is compatible and is capable enough to run uh, Nintendo Switch games at at least 10 to 15 FPS, it should be playable. But as you can see right here, I am trying Super Mario Smash Bros on uh, the Skyline Emulator normal version. But there are a lot of freezing issues which still need to be fixed. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Turn on all notifications because I will keep you guys up to date with all the latest emulation news. See you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.